This is the Business Agility video series, which you can watch in any order. In each video, I spend five to 10 minutes unpacking one of these concepts from Business Agility. This lecture is about black swans. According to Nassim Nicholas Taleb, we can look at two kinds of outcomes, the simple and the complex, and how likely they are to occur according to two kinds of probability distributions, normal distributions and power distributions. I'll cover Bayesian statistics in a separate video. The important thing to understand is that anything governed by a power law distribution with a complex outcome cannot be modeled and is beyond the realm of statistics. I'll use examples to understand these quadrants. In the upper left, we have simple one variable random events, like coin flips. In the upper right quadrant, we have multivariate random events that are generally covered by Bayesian models. The key to understanding this quadrant is that the outcome you see is a result of independent random processes that add up but don't multiply or affect each other. In the lower left, we have phenomena governed by power laws, where a small number of events dominates and the rest form a long tail of smaller outcomes. These are impossible to predict, but quite easy to model. And in the lower right, we have the results of complex interactions between several dependent variables, the magnitudes of which cannot be modeled because they haven't been seen before. This is the so-called black swan domain, and these events are outside the realm of statistics. In this quadrant, we have dependency. One factor greatly affects another, which can dramatically multiply or minimize results. We can predict weather and earthquakes better and better, but we have almost no way to say what the effects will be because the interactions are so complex. Let's look at frequency. On a day-to-day -day basis, Bayesian problems dominate. I highly recommend everyone listening take a full course on Bayesian reasoning and a yearly refresher. The Bayesian approach says that tomorrow is going to look a lot like today, but you must put it in perspective of all the yesterdays. Bayesian logic is ideally suited to most of the day-to-day -day decisions we make in our business and our personal lives. In the lower left, we have phenomena driven by power law dynamics. These are best left to people with experience in modeling. And the black swan domain? Well, we hardly ever see that. It's not really in our field of view. But when we look at the impact of these outcomes, the black swan dominates. Rare events that could have a huge impact are unpredictable, but we still need to be aware of and prepared for them. That is, we should hope for the best, but be prepared for the worst. It's also important to understand that black swan events can be positive as well as negative. Here's an example from a single company. The Mirage Resort and Casino in Las Vegas, owned by Steve Wynn, takes people's money in millions of Bayesian transactions each year. All the games in the casino are carefully designed to produce a small profit for the house and the sum of all these independent random events provides the company with a hefty profit at the end of the year. The hotel loves it when a gambler wins big. It just attracts more customers. So how does Steve win lose money? From the absolutely unpredictable. Roy Horn of the duo Siegfried and Roy suffered a brain injury by a tiger during a performance and the show had to be closed losing around $50 million in profit for the company annually. An employee responsible for filing special tax disclosure forms to the government simply hid them in his desk drawer for years. The company ended up paying a huge fine to avoid being shut down. When Wynn's daughter was kidnapped and held for ransom, Wynn took the $1.4 million in cash out of the cashier personally, violating state gambling laws, and his daughter was returned unharmed. He handled the matter himself, rather than calling police, 
because he had earlier sued the county sheriff for $10 million for claiming that Wynn was courting organized crime felons. Life is complicated. All the losses the Mirage ever suffered were off the model, uninsurable, and almost cost Wynn his business several times. It takes more than common sense to consistently minimize exposure to black swan risks because we must effectively model the unknown unknowns. The best tool for understanding the black swan domain is System 2, which means almost no one does it correctly. Now let's look at the macro picture. Doug Hubbard, an expert on risk management, concludes that in response to the 2008 financial crisis, several of the major consulting firms and standards organizations have charged in with a variety of solutions for risk management, none of which is better than consulting astrologers. Our chief risk officers are now overconfident because they have survived the made-up stress tests that they designed into their systems ahead of time, while regulators are busy making small adjustments to a system of backward-looking rules that will likely have little effect on whatever comes next. The worldwide financial system remains as interdependent, fragile, and poorly understood as ever. It's important to understand that risk always deals with things that we will learn or experience in the future. Risk is expressed in probabilities, and risk is relative. If a particular stock goes down, that could be an undesirable event for you, but the person who is short that stock now has less risk. The concept of transferring risk to someone else is called insurance. With the right kind of insurance, we can mitigate unforeseen events. When it comes to risk management, don't believe your risk officer. People like Doug Hubbard and other specialists do the kind of probabilistic modeling that can help minimize black swan risks and even take advantage of future volatility. But few companies outside the insurance industry use them. How should we balance a Bayesian view of the world and a black swan view? Most businesses should consider a barbell approach like this one. Spend about 80% of your time doing Bayesian reasoning for the day-to-day. -day. All executives and managers should take an immersive course in rationality and Bayesian decision-making, start to use sharper tools than spreadsheets, and put systems in place to assure people's egos and personalities aren't driving the process. You should also dedicate 20% of your resources to placing many small bets that are uncorrelated and could have big payoffs. If you have noticed that unlikely events are on the rise, you should be a student of black swans, unpredictability, and random chance. And when it comes to consultants, don't be convinced by people showing slides with barbells on them. A good consultant will use analogies to explain concepts not to convince you. It takes hard work and clear thinking to design a proper approach for each business. Come to businessagilityworkshop.com and get started on your journey.